The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Welcome into Views from the Sidelines. That's Malik Hill, still without his glasses. It's an ongoing saga at this point. I'm Joey Tysick. And uh, lots to talk about. College football playoffs have been announced, so there's a big controversy there. Um, We got some college basketball updates that aren't very fun to talk about. Um, What's Something something that surprised us, though, is the NBA in-season tournament actually kind of got a little exciting. And maybe it'll be an exciting finish for the semifinals and the finals coming up. Um, And then we have week 14 of the NFL to make picks. And picks might come down to the wire. We'll see. But uh, it's going to be interesting. So right away, college football playoff rankings came out. Michigan, number one. They beat Iowa in the Big Ten Championship. Not a big surprise. I lost the over-under, by the way. I don't know if you remember when you set the over-under to like three or whatever. Or yeah. if I would score three. I thought they would. And uh, they didn't. So, yeah. it is what it is. Uh, Washington is number two. They knocked off Oregon, which some would say was surprising. Yeah. We some thought- some people made the argument that Washington should be number one. Yeah. I, I can't say. I, I don't. Just go ahead. I, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> All ahead. I was going to say is that people were starting to think very highly of Oregon, and yeah. right when they did, it seemed like that's when Washington struck and knocked them off. So they're number two. Um, maybe there's an argument for it, for them over Michigan. I, I don't know. Uh, and then Texas beating Oklahoma State in the Big 12 championship. They are number three. And then the big controversy. Alabama beat number one Georgia in the SEC championship, and they get the number four spot over Florida State, your ACC champions. Malik, how do you feel about an undefeated Florida State team who all season long was towards the top getting kicked out of the college football playoffs? If the committee was consistent and it was down to who was most deserving, Mm -hmm. Florida State would be in. Yeah. Florida State deserves to be in. Mm -hmm. But we live in an unfair world, Joey. Yeah. It's unfair that Jordan Travis got hurt in the second to last game of the season against North Alabama of all teams. Yeah. It's unfair that their offense didn't look the same at all once he was out. It's unfair that the committee is very quick to take an SEC team over a team in any other conference. Yeah. Especially when it comes to one final spot in the SEC. And it's unfair that this year they determined that they were going to go with the four best teams. Mm-hmm. And when you go about four best teams, even though this version of Alabama isn't anything special, when they're going, they're really good. When Jalen Merrow is out there making plays mm-hmm. and running around and hitting deep passes – and the defense is playing aggressively like they did against Georgia. Alabama is a better team than Florida State is right now. Yeah. But Florida State deserves the last spot. It is unfortunate that that is not what the committee went by. Yeah. That's how I feel. Everybody else is up in arms about it. Mm -hmm. When I was watching Michigan win against Iowa, near the end of the game, something clicked in my head. I was like, Florida State isn't getting in. Like, it, it just, I realized that in the moment. Yeah. And I don't know if that was on anybody's bingo cards. I think a lot of people thought that Alabama had a chance against Georgia. And I don't know, I guess, it was thinking back, like, who would you have kicked out? Because then, at that point, you would have had to say, like, basically that Alabama had no chance, even if they beat Georgia, which would be hard to figure out. Um, so I don't know. 
Yeah, it, it stinks. It like I would be so mad as a Florida State fan uh, or a Florida State player, anything like that, because it feels like that is a entertainment move. Which, unfortunately, at the end of the day, I hate to say it, the NCAA is an entertainment business. They're not a it's sports business. Every decision they've made in the past decade, almost, yeah, has been about money. Mm-hmm. And that's and what TV they, ratings. I think that's what people. And it's it's become more and more about that every year. Yeah, I think people forget the NCAA is a business at the end of the day, and as much as that stinks, they're going to operate like a business sometimes, and that's why we criticize them all the time because of those operations. And I definitely don't agree with it. I think, I mean, I would also be mad though. I guess if I was Alabama and I just said, "Oh, I'd be the number one team." In our championship, we had one bad loss, and that's where we should have got in too. So you got to kick somebody out. Somebody's not going to be happy because you, you can't, like, in that scenario either, like, if you're keeping Florida State and you say, okay, we're going to keep Florida State and Alabama, we're going to kick out Texas. Now, that doesn't make any sense either. So either way you cut it, somebody's going to be mad. But it stinks to see an undefeated team that had a great season come up short. And I could definitely see the argument that if Jordan Travis was still available, they would have made it. I don't know. So it's going to be controversial. But I think the, the other interesting bit now, too, is we saw Michigan's reaction when they got drawn Alabama. Now, they didn't look too happy about it. They wanted um, to play Florida State. Yeah, which... And I, I, everybody sh- knew they sh- they wanted to... Well, if people didn't know, then I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Because it's obvious that a team would want to get an easier draw. Right, especially instead of having one. A, yeah. Yeah. So, how do you feel now that you have to... You get to play Alabama? Like, are you nervous? Like, does that make you more nervous now that it's a, a streaking... Uh, Alabama team. No matter who they played, I would have been nervous once the kick kickoff began. Yeah. I mean, everybody is going to take Alabama. Mm-hmm. Nobody thinks Michigan can do it. And it's really funny. It's not based off of anything Alabama has done this year. Yeah. It is about what Alabama has been in the past decade plus. Mm-hmm. It's about the type of athlete people are used to seeing at Alabama. Yeah. And it's about Nick Saban. Mm-hmm. This year's team, like I said, has been nothing special. Without Jalen Milrow, they're probably a nine-win team at best. Yeah. They probably they should have lost to Auburn. Right. <laughs> they pulled off a miracle. Mm-hmm. They almost lost to Arkansas at home, who was four and eight. Yep. But they pulled off one against Georgia. Right. And now they're here. Mm-hmm. Do they have a very good defense? Yes. Do they have high-level talent? Of course, they're Alabama. Do they have the greatest coach of all time? Yes. And Jalen Milrow is an absolute nightmare when you let him run around. Mm-hmm. But there's still nothing special as a team. Yeah. And Michigan, Michigan has to get it done. I I can't. Yeah. I can't make any prediction. I don't. I don't. I don't know, man. Mm-hmm. Like everybody believes they can't do it. Yeah. That that is all. The, that's all it is at the end of the day. Every bet will be Alabama, just straight up money line. People are gonna bet Alabama parlays. Nobody around the country believes in Michigan. Yeah, and I think a lot of people still want Michigan to lose. Like they don't want they don't want to. Honestly, see the- I think only a certain amount of people still care about the quote unquote cheating scandal thing. I think a lot of people care about it more than you think. I don't personally care about it. You know, like people around here. I Every think- everybody I've heard on, on social media, I've basically heard that they they just think it's like I said. Just the, the decade plus of knowledge mm. they have on Alabama says Michigan has no chance. Okay. That's all I've seen. Yeah. The other thing that I was going to bring up too is like in this scenario, and we'll get into it once we get to bowl season more, is like if you're Michigan, no matter who you play, like making the college football playoff is not enough anymore. Yeah. They have to get to that championship game. You have to, you have to win at least one game. Right. They haven't proven they can win a game. Yeah. They can't 
like now they're in the era like I think we talked about it a couple weeks ago like they have gotten to the point where they are they don't care about Ohio they don't they shouldn't care about Ohio State they've beaten them three straight years now you have to elevate to that next level of a championship caliber team you can't just be the team that oh I beat Ohio State well when Ohio State was beating Michigan they were also contending for championships so Michigan has to take that next step and not get trounced in the first round of the playoffs. And this is where I, I will say this. I'm not making a prediction on the game, but I do have doubts. Hmm. Because Michigan is built to win the Big Ten. Right. They're built to, to outlast Ohio State. Mm-hmm. They've done it three different times in three different ways, beating Ohio State and winning the Big Ten. I don't. They haven't built themselves to go out and beat the best – most athletic, most talented teams in the country. Right. They can out-coach you. They can out-physical you. They can outsmart you. And they have enough athletes to keep pace mm-hmm. in for four quarters. They don't have the game plan. And at certain positions, they don't have the guys to just go into full gear and just blow a team out. Right. So if they win a national championship, both games are going to be close. Mm-hmm. This has been a thing for me. I, I've i appreciated everything Michigan has done the past three years. But the way they play on offense gives me no hope that they can win a national championship. Hmm. They play the slowest pace in the country. Right. You have really talented skill position players that you don't really use. In the Jim Harbaugh era, he had Nico Collins. You know, Nico Collins never had more than, like, 50-something catches in a season. Yeah. Never had more than, like, 500-something yards Mm -hmm. and, like, six touchdowns. Why do you think that is? Yeah. Especially when you look at what he's doing now in the NFL just the last couple weeks. They had Donovan Peoples-Jones, who was an absolute freak. Mm -hmm. His high was, like, 40 catches for 400-something yards and five touchdowns. Yeah. Jim Harbaugh doesn't get – he doesn't care. He gets the talent, and he doesn't care as long as they win. Mm Mm-hmm. That that doesn't fly when you get to the highest level. Yeah. And that terrifies me. Mm-hmm. So, amen. <laughs> Everything I'm saying says I don't believe Michigan will probably win. Yeah. But I'm, I'm also not making a prediction because mm-hmm. I, I just I, – they have to do it. Like I said. Yeah. Everybody doubts in them. Nobody believes in them. They just got to do it. Yeah. And we can preview it more, like I said, once we get yeah. into that time. Because I could talk about – I could talk all day about some of the cool bowl matchups that we're going to get actually uh, this year, but we'll get into those as we get closer to the to yeah, the Washington holidays. Texas should be a electric game, mm-hmm. a lot of offense. Yeah, and unfortunately, again for Florida State, they got to play Georgia now in the Orange well. Bowl. I, I think a lot of their fans and players are kind of mentally out of it. Yeah, probably. I I I just feel bad for Florida State. Yeah, it sucks. And then I think like Ohio State Missouri will be fun. That'll be a really fun game. Um, Even though Kyle McCord has entered the transfer portal, mm-hmm. players have played in a bowl game while in the transfer yeah. portal. I don't know if they're going to have Kyle McCord. Yeah, play. we get to that that weird time of the season where guys will sit out of bowl games and things like yeah. that. I also, I don't expect Marvin Harrison to play, but we'll see. Yeah, he's been talking about coming back. Did you see that? I, uh, they said I it's not very likely. But they said that there's a chance. Come back for what? I, I, he I'm wants not to beat Michigan. That. That's that's what I had heard. That would be hilarious if he came back for a fourth year and lost yeah. at home again. Yeah, that'd be hilarious. Go to the NFL. Yeah. You're a top three pick. Mm-hmm. Just go. Like it'll be fun too. Like Louisville versus USC. And Caleb Williams. There's like no way he's playing in that game. So I'm pretty. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there are already rumors that he's not playing. Yeah. Oh, and then the other one that I was going to bring up, and then we'll move on. I love that Northwestern made a bowl game. Seven to five Northwestern. David Brown was They're big playing team Utah. Coach of the year. They're playing Utah, which is gonna be Yeah. I have Utah. no idea who's playing that quarterback for Utah. Yeah. Their backup Bryson Barnes just entered the transfer portal. Yeah. It'll be interesting. Yeah. But good for Northwestern. Um, okay. College basketball. <sighs> we have some we have some things to talk this about. This is gonna be coming a routine every week, and I don't like it. Listen, I, I'm in the mode of listening to 
was Valenny and Rico yeah. again because of Michigan State basketball mm-hmm. and hearing what they have to say about it. Yeah. It's bad. It's bad. Yeah. Uh, Can they, I ask you a few questions? Yeah. How has this happened where Carson Cooper and Maddie Sissoko are both starting mm-hmm. and both terrible? Because neither of them provide offense on the floor. We talked about it before. Carson that leads Cooper, to another question. Where's the development? We don't have enough time <laughs> for that. Okay. Okay, I'm, go- I'm going to leave my questions. Just go-, just go ahead. Just go ahead. They lost at home to Wisconsin. They got their bus kicked. Yes. They have gone completely backwards. And I, I hate that I keep bringing it up, but it's like, Outside of Tyson Walker, they have no offense. None. They can't hit an open shot. They can't move the ball. Their offense, I, I've said it a hundred times now since even since last year when they were winning. Their offense is ugly. I can't I can't stand it. It's too much dribbling around and it just they don't seem to be moving with like a purpose. And they just they have no offense at all. And if, if they didn't have offense, okay, maybe you have a good defense. They don't have a good defense. So it's like, what are they doing? And it's another thing we brought up multiple times. Matty Sissoko. He's done nothing in his four years. Malik Hall. A disappointment. What has he done? A disappointment. Like all these guys that we were so high on and thought, okay, that maybe they'll, they'll turn into something. Matty Sissoko, maybe he was like, he was the one that you could see maybe not working out from the beginning. But Malik Hall, you always thought, okay, there's there's little signs here. We're gonna maybe they'll figure something out. Nothing has been figured out. And then AJ Hoggard and Jaden Nakins, again, I feel like I'm just repeating myself. AJ Hoggard hit two threes yesterday. Congratulations. Cool. Good for you. <laughs> Those are the two guys yeah. that everybody was so excited to get back, and they've done nothing. I don't I don't know where to go with this team. I feel like a crazy person because I keep just talking about the same stuff over and over. I think at some point Izzo has to live up to his word and start playing freshman. Yeah. You cannot shelve Xavier Booker like he doesn't exist. Yeah. Like what? At this point, okay, we talked about it last try week. Try to get some score try to get some scoring. Yeah. If you don't get any from your top two big men. Right. And they don't play great defense. We mentioned it before, like, Xavier Booker did not look very good when he was playing. But at this point, nobody looks good. He's more talented than the two guys you're starting. He's got more of a chance. Yes. He's still only a freshman. So now, okay, you you cut the leash short because he played bad in his moments. Now we can extend the leash back out because nobody on, like, your front court is playing well. So... You just throw stuff out there. Start trying things. And people always say, like, this is the thing 97.1 was bringing up a lot. People are always like, oh, well, Izzo will figure it out in February and March. You can't do that. Like, you can't just go and do that, especially with a younger, like a very weird team that they have where they have a lot of veterans and then they have a lot of young guys. You're not going to be able to just turn it around like that. And you have to get development going. Their development has been terrible for a long time. You go back to Jaron Jackson. Look at what he's done in the NBA compared to what he did in college. Jaron Jackson was a ready-to-go pro. Yeah. And Tom Izzo didn't want to use him like that. He sat him in the tournament. Yeah. So. What would you say the last recruit that lived up to his billing was Miles Bridges? Do you think that's. Yeah. I guess. Miles was a all-conference guy. Yeah. And he got better from year one to year two. Mm-hmm. Can you name someone else besides Cassius? Him? I think Cassius lived up yeah. to him. Cassius, Cassius is he might be like the the all time Spartan yeah. of the past decade, right? Yeah, because he's one of the better ones. I mean, yeah. he was a guy that we knew was basically going to be a college player. Yeah, fit perfectly into the mold. But he was even better than people expected. Yes, exactly. So that's that's like the main one that I can think of. That's two. Yeah, in about the past five six years, that's two. Mm-hmm. 
And you think of all the talent that they've produced into the NBA. Like, a lot of their guys have worked out in the NBA for the most part. Um, so, I don't know. It, it's it's frustrating. And then some people, you know, again, on 97.1, they were talking about how, like, oh, well, you need to put the right coaches around Tom Izzo. The thing that's starting to bother me is people are not looking at the root of the problem always that it could be Tom Izzo himself. And we've said it for a couple of years now. He it hasn't just, changed. It just seems like he hasn't adapted. He's so stuck yeah. in his ways. And there's been times, like, there's been a few times in the tournament that we've seen him kind of adjust his coaching style, and it's worked out. But it always seems like he reverts back to himself eventually. He is trying to get 2,000 effort and team flow. Mm-hmm. Out of 2023 kids. Yeah. These aren't those kids from Flint in 2000. Mm-hmm. This isn't Shannon Brown and Maurice Ager in 2005 and Paul Davis in them. Yeah. They had good chemistry. This isn't even Kalen Lucas in them in 2011 and yeah. 2012. Mm-hmm. This isn't them either. Right. This isn't any of those teams. Yeah. These aren't those kids. Mm-hmm. And that's why I think we keep comparing to like that Miles Bridges, Jaron Jackson team. When they had, like, big-time recruits that came in. He didn't know what to do with them. Right. And I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen with these guys just yet, but the way that this team is going, you have to start playing them. We've seen a good, like, the best thing is we've seen good signs out of Jeremy Fears. I think yeah. that's that's one thing that we've seen somewhat and consistently. small spots of Cohen Carr, but mm-hmm. he's still clearly raw. Right. But with cutting off Xavier Booker completely... I got it at the time, like I said. What does that do for his confidence? Right. Yeah. <laughs> but at this point, like, bring him back. Like, you're not yeah. losing out on anything. Like, him, and when Jackson Kohler gets healthy, you have to start him. Mm-hmm. Because he he's the only one that can give you a presence in the post. Yeah. Even if he can't defend, even if he can't run up and down every other play. Mm-hmm. He's the one thing. That can somewhat get your offense flowing. Yeah. And this is the thing that's bothered me for years. Like I've Again, I've been saying it for years. Why can Michigan State not get any big men? You have Maddie Sissoko, 6'8". We're, we're asking for Jackson Kohler to come back. He's 6'8". Like, these are small guys. I think Carson Cooper is 6'10", but he's, he's just yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. So... It like bothers me that they just do not. It seems like they don't care about their front court, which doesn't make any sense, especially in the Big Ten, which is known for having big front courts. The any even just in college basketball in general nowadays, there's a lot of just big men that clog up the center with shooters around them. Yeah, like I we both understand guys like Zach Eady. Nobody's really right. It doesn't matter. I don't see these dudes like playing well against Maryland. Yeah, like Julian Reese is really good, mm-hmm. and he's probably dominating Carson Cooper and Maddie Sissoko. Yeah, there are teams that are mid to lower in the Big Ten that probably are giving you better production in the post. Right. So yeah, I, I don't know that they, they have to do something in the coming weeks, months. They have Listen, to just. You know what? You know Izzo. You yeah. know what he's gonna do. He's gonna let it ride. Yeah, that's what I'm nervous of. Yeah. And it's just, it's, there's going to be no team that we can watch in this area that matters. And that stinks. Maybe Oakland. Maybe, maybe, maybe they can turn it around. I hope so. Yeah. We forgot to talk about them last week. Yeah, but they, they beat, they upset Xavier at yes. Xavier. Mm-hmm. But then they got beat by like 30 by IPFW and they just yeah. lost by one to Toledo. Mm-hmm. Heartbreaking losses. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, though, I, Fort Wayne's just so good right now. They've been playing so good in the last couple of years. I don't completely blame them. Um, I, I got to stop talking about Michigan State. Give us a, sh- a quick little update on Michigan as well because so they're Mi- also kind of in the same. Michigan is turning into a slightly better version of last year's team. Mm-hmm. Uh, they went on the road to Oregon. Doug McDaniel went off. Yep, He had like 34 points. He was hitting all types of crazy uh, ISO threes. It was a back-and-forth game. Oregon shot like 60% from the field, Mm -hmm. like 50% from three. Sounds like how Long Beach State played against them. And their five-star true freshman, uh, Jackson Shellstad, 
ended up hitting the three in the last second to beat them. Yeah. Three point loss. Tough game. Michigan played all right. Mm-hmm. It, it is what it is. Yeah. Uh, last night against Indiana. Back and forth game. Michigan has some pretty good offense. Defense is average. Indiana uh, plays pretty well. Game is back and forth. Indiana wins 79-76. Yeah. Close game. Another loss. I feel like this is going to be the entire season. Mm -hmm. They're going to have a few wins that make you think they're getting on the right track. They're going to let another team shoot like 70% from the field and just not miss shots. It's going to be just a back and forth game and Michigan is going to lose back and forth win loss. This is probably like a 17 and 15 team. Yeah. I I don't have any faith in them just taking another step. Unfortunately, as long as John Howard is on that sideline, I don't have faith. Yeah. Even though he's letting Phil Martelli do most of the coaching and Juwan is just a like presence on the bench right now. Mm-hmm. They're they're playing like Juwan ball for the most part. With a little a little extra sprinkle of Phil Martelli, which gives them some kick on offense. Yep. But yeah, you know, outside of that, it's it's the same thing. Yeah. From game to game. Just yeah. Inconsistent defense, good offense that sometimes goes cold and letting the other team get buckets. Yeah. When they need them. And their month of December is gonna be very important. Now, the, the teams that they're playing are not that big of a deal. But that's why it's important because there are a lot of middling teams that they have to be able to prove that they're better than. They're playing Iowa. That'll be a hard game at mm-hmm. Iowa. Then they're playing Eastern. Should be a win. Should be. But Eastern's not too bad. Uh, then they're playing uh, Florida in the Jumpman Invitational. They should be Florida, but I, you can't fully trust them. And then they're playing McNeese at the end of the month. But McNeese if, is eight and two, and they're a team that is notorious for being a shooting team. They put up a lot of points. I'm not saying they should lose that game, but you got to be careful of it. You know who McNeese's basketball coach is? No, I don't remember. Will Wade, ah. former LSU basketball coach. Mm-hmm. Michigan's probably going to lose to McNeese State because yeah. Will Wade is a better coach than Jawan Howard. Yeah. And then on the opposite yeah. side, I'm, I meant to talk about Michigan State's schedule because it is brutal. They got to go to M- Nebraska. Then they get Baylor. And they're going to get stomped by Baylor. Then they play Oakland. That'll be a fun game, actually. That could be a fun Let's game. Let's go Golden Grizzlies. Then they play Stony Brook. Should be an easy win. And then they're in the same boat as Michigan, where at the end of the month, they got to play Indiana State. Now, Indiana State, smaller school. But they've beaten some decent teams in lower conferences. Um, They hung in with Alabama at the beginning of the season. And they're just one of those teams you don't want to, like, take for granted. So that that game, like, oddly makes me nervous at them being 8-1. And And then we get into the new year. Then everybody's Big Ten schedule starts, and both these teams will fall flat on their faces. And we'll be crying all all the way to March. And hoping that maybe they somehow make it, uh, make the tournament at all. To be honest, why does Izzo schedule like this? <laughs> like, is it? Do you think he's like stripped the team's confidence? I don't know. A, they're supposed to be a top five preseason team, mm-hmm. and they're just getting beat by all ranked teams. Everybody. They're unranked. Yep. I don't know what. I don't know. I don't know why he thought this would help. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I assume they thought they were going to be better than they are, but, yeah, it's it's not turning out well. All right, let's quickly talk about the NBA real quick. The in-season tournament is coming to a close, actually. We got the semifinals tonight, Pacers, Bucks, and the Pelicans. Pelicans, baby. Taking on the Lakers. Um, and I think the like the big story of the in-season tournament has been the Pacers. They've been kind of the exciting team. They're the team that I think I'm going to adopt for the rest of the season as my Eastern Conference team. Um, Just because, again, they're fun to watch. And uh, Tyrese Halliburton is having a crazy season. Um, Have you watched much of the in-season tournament? I haven't. I've seen the highlights, of course. but I I I really haven't. I think I'm going to watch these semifinal games. I I checked out when they came out with the idea and started pitching it. Mm -hmm. 
I'm still not a big fan of the idea. I don't think it's very useful. Mm -hmm. But after that Boston Indiana game a few days ago, yeah, I had to admit that it's actually working, and it kind of surprised me. Mm -hmm. Those Indiana fans were all in. The Indiana team played like it was a playoff series. The intensity was there. The game, it, it, it was like a playoff atmosphere. Yeah. And having that during the regular season, that is huge for the NBA. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if they can replicate that every game. I don't know if they can. Right. Like, watching the highlights of the Pelicans-Kings game, the energy, all Kings games are hype because those fans are so passionate. Yeah. So it was kind of like a regular Kings game, but the Pelicans ended up winning. Mm -hmm. But even getting one game like the Boston Indiana game, it's a success to me. Yeah, like it. It is a a because people are fans are buying in, mm -hmm. and the players are buying in too. Yeah. So I there's not much I can say about it outside of I'm always gonna have my personal. I don't want this. I don't care about it. Right. But I admit it's working. Mm -hmm. It is do it's doing what they want it to do so far. Yeah. Uh, the other funny thing is like, it's not funny, but the Lakers keep winning in this tournament, which is annoying. Um, they beat the Suns the other night, and the Suns were without did Bradley Beal. Did you see the way the game ended? Yeah, pretty yeah. uh, pretty controversial, mm -hmm. but um, eh, you know, whatever. It was close. Um, oh, and then on the Eastern Conference side, Bucks just beat up on the Knicks and you got to feel a little bit bad for the Knicks because like they've been com kind of complaining about Julius Randle being inefficient and all that. And he put up 41 points against the Bucks and played really good, but that's it probably, just, it's probably like the best possible game you could get out of Julius Randle, possibly out of the Knicks in general. And, and they lost by 20. Well, we, we both know the Knicks aren't contenders. Yeah. That we we can't be surprised. I just always like the Knicks for some dumb reason. That's not okay. Joey. It's not okay. And Why do you always like the I Knicks? I don't know. I don't know where that came from. I, I mean, unless I guess unless you live in New York, I don't know why. Partially, it was back in the Carmelo days. Okay, that's why. Still setting yourself I've up all, for failure, not because of Melo, but because they were the Knicks. Yeah, I've been a fan of Melo, so like followed the Knicks a little bit, yeah. and then I don't know. It's just weird, and I just like their players, kind of. I I I have a toxic relationship <laughs> with middle of the pack Listen, teams. You, you like the Knicks, you like the potential Pelicans. potential teams. Yeah. It's Yeah, it's it's You bad. don't buy in on the teams with actual bright futures. <laughs> yeah. You just choose teams where it's like, "Oh, they're they're all right." I always hope. But hey, I was right on the Pelicans. They had a chance. They had a window. <laughs> <laughs> Is it closed already to you? I think it's somewhat still open, it's but not it, open. it's it's getting close. Minnesota is like in a much better spot than New Orleans right now. Do you realize that? I don't know. Minnesota's sixteen and four, Joe. <laughs> I get that, but I don't know. I still believe And and they, they have a, a super a young superstar that can stay healthy. You talking about cat? Don't make <laughs> me take these headphones off and leave. That's disrespectful. Anyway. Um, so today we got the Pacers and the Bucks playing. That should be really fun. Um, uh, and then Pelicans, Lakers. I really hope the Lakers lose. I'll take anybody. If the Pelicans make it to the finals, though, I'll be excited. I'm taking the Pacers. Okay. Against the Bucks. I like the vibes. I like Tyrese Halliburton. His, the way he plays is so different. It's so unorthodox. Yeah. But it's like. He's efficiency wise, he's playing like Stephen Curry. Did you see which is insane? Did you see the thing about like how the Pacers have like all these unwanted players from the twenty twenty draft class? Yeah. <laughs> I thought That's that was hilarious. interesting. Aaron Nesmith, Jalen Smith, Obi. Obi Toppin yeah. and Tyrese. Yeah. That's pretty cool. And then uh the finals I think are Saturday. Yeah. Championship is Saturday. Um, which could be interesting. Especially if it's like Pacers Pelicans. Because Bucks Lakers would be like people are like oh that's a NBA championship preview no nah. I want the young gun teams I agree so that would be cool but we'll we'll see alrighty week fourteen of the NFL I can't believe we're in week fourteen 
That doesn't sound right. Everything is going by extremely fast. Playoffs, We're almost in 2024. I know. The playoffs are around the corner. It's insane. NFL. And that means picks are windling down. I'm not going to lie. Last week was a bad week. It was a bad week. For who? That's the question. Well, I wouldn't say for both of us, but almost for both of us. Now you're getting even more vague. I know. <laughs> Uh, last year, uh, last year, last week, you had eight correct picks. Okay. On, I mean, week thirteen was a smaller slate, so I guess it's actually better than I thought. I, however, got five correct <laughs> picks. Uh, it was bad all around. The only shining pick that I made probably was the Chargers <laughs> over New England. Listen, nobody won. That was that our. <laughs> you can count that as a loss because nobody won. That was our preseason. Bet you won four and a half games. <laughs> yeah. Um. All the other ones, I don't know. I picked Cleveland for Joe Flacco, and the Rams ran all over Cleveland. That was bad. That's what you get. So that is what you deserve. Joe Flacco didn't look that bad though. That is what you deserve. He didn't, but still. So, score is you have 110 picks. I have 97. So it's getting rough out here, to say the least. And speaking of rough, Thursday night football is New England at Pittsburgh. New England has, I believe, lost four straight games while holding their opponents under 10 points. Each Say game. that again? I think New England has scored or lost four straight games while holding their opponents under 10 points. I almost want that to That sounds like football hell is what that sounds like. Yeah. I want to verify, but I every time I see a Patriots post, all their fans are under it saying, "Good, we we're closer to the number one pick." Their yeah. fans have just done a complete one eighty, yeah, and it is hilarious. Oh, it's like ten or less. So they lost to the Chargers zero to six. They lost to the Giants seven to ten. They lost to the Colts six to ten, and then they lost to the Commanders seventeen to twenty. So yeah, that's bad. For New England. Their defense is still bad. pretty good. And then uh Pittsburgh, Kenny Pickett. I don't think he's gonna play Pittsburgh in this game. Pittsburgh is a joke. It's all everyone needs to know. It's the Mitch Trubisky show. Pittsburgh. That's just as bad. Just as bad. But are they worse than the Patriots? Listen, I'd rather see them play Mason Rudolph, who I believe is like on the practice squad or just inactive or something. Yeah. Like he's know. on the team but just doesn't suit up. Mm-hmm. I'm going with Pittsburgh. I can't I can't pick New England, even though I need to make up ground. Uh, I'm going with Pittsburgh too. New England unfortunately. Just, New England's just bad. Uh Carolina at New Orleans. We might have a Jameis show. This game is gonna be chaos. Oh my god. Did you see him come into the game against the Lions mm -hmm. and instantly almost throw a pick and it got tipped to Chris Olave? Yeah. Don't you just love Jameis? Uh, he's so much fun to watch. It, it's amazing. He's excited. And he's always just smiling and just having a good time as it's all going. I know. His life must be incredible. I know. Uh, New Orleans. Yeah. I think I think this year, I think they should shut it down for Bryce Young. I don't yeah. I don't understand just continuing his play. Yeah. I Like. Let Andy Dalton sling it around. If they win this game, like although, 17 to 10, although honestly, what's the positive? Andy Dalton might give them a better chance to win. That might be the problem. That might be the problem. It, it might. He might. So, um, Detroit at Chicago. I really hate this game because a lot of experts are starting to talk about Chicago. Give me your feelings after that Lions win on the road in New Orleans. It's it, still, has to, it has to be like a 50-50 feeling. Yeah, it's still not good great. and... That game should have been like forty-two to seven. Yeah, when they started, you're like, yeah. "Yes, we can go back to not Excellent worrying." Excellent start. Twenty-one nothing before the first quarter was over. Yeah, it was like five minutes. They yeah. had like, they were the first team to do that since like nineteen ninety something. And uh, you're like, "Okay, we don't have to worry about the Lions anymore again. We can we can coast for a minute." But they let New Orleans back into the game, and and then the defense started doing things that they do, mm -hmm. things that are red flags all over the place. Yeah. Um, I don't letting Derek Carr and that offense just walk down the field over and over again. Mm -hmm. It just makes you feel bad. Yeah, it doesn't make it doesn't make you feel good at all. Yeah, I'm still going Detroit though. I I think 
although I'm a little bit worried about the game, I think they're going to make the hopefully the right adjustments uh, to the problems they had in the previous game to Chicago, and they're going to amend themselves. I'm taking the Lions too. Yeah, ten and three Lions, huh? Crazy. The ten and three Detroit Lions. Crazy. Houston at New York. The Jets. Zach Wilson. Back to the starting quarterback position. Houston at, oh, my God. The Tim Boyle experiment is over. Why did it start? I thought it was going to get worse when I sent the text that they had picked up Brett Rippon off the practice squad of the Rams. But Zach Wilson starting at home for the Jets against the playoff contending Houston Texans. That's crazy. Neither of us are saying Jets, so. Part of me wants to just because, but, like, can I really do that? I I think there's enough better games later that I don't think I have to. Why would you do that to yourself? (laughs) I don't know. I'm taking the Houston Texans. (laughs) Texans are fun. I can't even believe you even thought about picking the Jets. (laughs) Got to start getting different. Wow. Yeah. How crazy is it that C.J. Stroud is already like 10 times the quarterback Zach Wilson is yeah. in his third year? Mm-hmm. That's kind of depressing. Yeah. It is what it is, though. It's the yeah. NFL. Uh, we got another fun quarterback matchup here. Gardner Minshew versus Jake Browning. I don't feel the excitement, Malik. The Colts are another playoff team right now. They're in contention. They're 7-5. and five. Give me the Colts. All right, I'm going Cincinnati. Doesn't feel good. Jacksonville should have won that game. Yep. They should have beat Cincinnati. Trevor Lawrence got hurt, yeah. and that's not good. Speaking of Jacksonville, we got Jacksonville at Cleveland. Don't know who the starter for Cleveland is because Dorian Thompson Robinson still in the concussion protocol, even though they said he's been progressing. But do you trust Joe Flacco or C.J. Beathard if it came down to that? This is just terrible. This is so bad. Yeah, if you look at the quarterback matchups we have this week, New England and Pittsburgh, Bailey Zappi, probably Mitch this Trubisky. This is not because of your guy. I'm taking the Browns. Yes. This is because of the defense. They can make C.J. Beathard look like a high school quarterback if they want to. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to take Jacksonville because I need to make up ground, which might end up losing ground. But we'll see. Uh, the Rams at Baltimore. The Rams have won like four straight. Something like that. Baltimore. Okay, good. Puka Nakua is the one Ram that I support. Okay. Even though Cooper Cup is good too, but are you? I, I just love the Cooper. Are you in the uh, the nervous boat of the Rams having to play the Lions having to play the Rams in the first round of the playoffs? People are talking about it now. I mean, that would be electric. It would be crazy. No Lions fan should be nervous if that's the matchup. No. You should be grateful. Yeah, it, the stadium would be rocking. Oh yeah. That'd be cool. Um, Tampa Bay at Atlanta. Yuck. Is Baker playing? I think so. I haven't heard anything different. Atlanta somehow keeps winning, too, which just yeah. makes me mad. I'll go Falcons. Okay. I'll go Tampa Bay. I think it's close enough. Atlanta's defense is actually pretty good, though. Makes me a little bit nervous. Uh, Minnesota at Las Vegas. Josh Dobbs versus Aiden, Aiden, O'Connell. O- Aiden O'Connell. What has the NFL become? What happened? It's rough. We got a lot of quarterback injuries. You said Minnesota at Vegas? Yes. Justin Jefferson is supposed to be back, though. Give me I can't decide. You pick. Okay, I'm taking Minnesota, then. Even though I don't want them to win. I'll take the Raiders then. I, that's what I was scared of because the Raiders are like my kryptonite. Is that Josh Dubs magic? Has it run out? Mm, I don't think so. I, I think he just had a really bad game. I don't think he's going to be like spectacular as he was, but I think he's going to find a middle ground. Uh, Seattle at San Francisco. San Francisco now kind of the touted Super Bowl favorite after they knocked off the Eagles pretty handily. But uh, Seattle was able to stay with Dallas last week. So Seattle is a decent team. 
there are times they look that good like they did against Dallas, and there are times where they score like 17 points for three weeks straight. Mm-hmm. I don't know what team is going to show up this week. Give me the 49ers. Yeah, I'm going the 49ers as well. Not enough to get different. I think their defense is just too good. Buffalo at Kansas City might be my favorite game of the week, but Kansas City hasn't been as exciting as normal. Um, I'm going to go right back to Buffalo. You said it's in Buffalo? Uh, in Kansas City. Oh, it's in Kansas City. Mm-hmm. You mean Kansas City? Okay. Could be tough. And then we got Denver at the Chargers. Here we go again with the Listen, Chargers. Here's, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look you in the eyes and, and see what pick you make. I want to I want to see what you what's in here right now. What's in, in the chest? How you feeling, Joey? Well, in the chest, it says Chargers. Well, actually, no. In the chest, it says Fire Brandon Staley. In the heart, it says it. Chargers. What's the pick? I have to I have to continue with the Chargers. They're the team that I picked at the beginning of the season. So if they gotta they gotta make a run towards the end of the season. I don't know. I don't want to look at you right now. Okay, take that. Broncos. Go for it. Let's ride. Don't 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 act confident. <laughs> Let's now. ride. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. You might get like two wins this week, Joey. <laughs> All right. You might win two. Okay. You just you just put your faith. You got cocky with Brandon Staley. Do you realize what you've just done? <laughs> no. You might have just jinxed this podcast. Mm. We'll see. Oh my god. We'll see. I'm ashamed. Uh, Sunday night football. Philly at Dallas. Another fun NFC matchup. Um I don't know if I believe Dallas though. Do you? Do you believe in Dallas? I don't want the Cowboys to win, but the Eagles look fraudulent. Mm. Or at least they just got destroyed by one of the best teams in the league last week. Yeah. I don't want Dallas to win, but I'm taking Dallas. Okay. I will take the Eagles. Then we got two Monday night games. Are you a fan of the doubleheader Monday night? No. (laughs) Absolutely not. You might change your... I'm always asleep before the second one. Well, just wait. Hold off on your opinion until you hear about the games. We got Tennessee at Miami. How you feeling? Miami by a landslide. <laughs> you like that game? That's a good game, right? Will Levis? I'm taking Miami. Your quarterback, Will Levis? Uh, you like mayo in your coffee, Joey? No, I don't like coffee. <laughs> I don't like mayonnaise. It's a, it's a double no. Um, okay, well, if you didn't like that game, here's the nightcap. Green Bay at the Giants. How you like that one? Hmm? It's a fun Monday night, Give me right? Tommy DeVito. Dang it, that's what I was going to do. I'm betting everything on Tommy DeVito. Okay, that's fair. I'm betting my life savings on Tommy DeVito. I'll take Green Bay, I guess. I don't want them to win because then people are going to start talking about how they're winning, going into the playoffs, blah, 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 whatever. I'm taking Green Bay. Hoping for the best. And Jordan Love has played really well the past few weeks. Yeah, he's looked pretty good. Their defense is all right. Um... It does stink that Tyrod Taylor apparently is back, but they're not going to play him. They're sticking with Tommy Listen, DeVito. Just, it's unfortunate just, just, for me. Let's Tyrod sit. It's it's unfortunate for me, but I get the rest of the world wants to see Tommy DeVito. I can't completely complain about it. I get it. So yeah, that's uh, week fourteen in the books for the NFL, and uh, which means we're in uh, fantasy playoffs next week, which is fun. So. If you listen to our fantasy podcast, you can hear all about that. Anyway, I think that's it for today. I don't think I got anything left. Maybe Malik will bring his his glasses back next week. I better have my glasses we'll next week. I will have my glasses next week. An update. Yes. We'll have to have an update. All righty. This has been uh, Views from the Sidelines, and we will see you guys next time. Michigan sucks. Michigan State sucks. The Lions are our hope. What does that say about 2023? There's also a team we're not even going to speak of. Good luck.